here's the dilemma. Okay, if we take a look at the first slide, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, whatever. Okay, here's the challenge. Microsoft is scared to death of Google. I don't know if you've heard, it's in all the papers. Well, if there were any papers still up. What's happening is we have this whole rush to get to the cloud. The cloud being essentially the way to give services, and especially if they're commodity-like services, such as email, such as file sharing, such as all that kind of stuff, if we can have that so it's hosted up in the cloud because that minimizes capital expenditure such as hardware, ongoing costs such as server maintenance and all that kind of thing. And email should be, relatively speaking, a commodity. Okay? So what they've done is they've taken the exchange and they've taken the SharePoint to very server-centric services and they've pushed them up so that the resources are up in the cloud in a farm configuration, meaning that there are tons of exchange servers that Microsoft is managing. You can still use the exchange functionality when you connect to them through Outlook. That's hosted exchange. Same thing for SharePoint, SharePoint services. How many people are SharePoint people here? All right, cool. So the whole idea is to have SharePoint servers. Same thing, SharePoint services, so we're talking WSS, okay, uh, that are also up online. And the nice thing is then, you, with your organization, you can connect to those resources without the investment. Okay? So that's our starting point. Now, what BPOS was, was a collaboration of Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and link, uh, excuse me, Live Meeting and Office Communicator Online. Those four services and a bundling of that, that was either five bucks a month if you just wanted Exchange per user, or ten bucks a month if you wanted all four of these per user. So you could, you could take an exchange organization, which for a small, medium organization, actually we were just taking a look at one a couple days ago, if you looked at the server and the software, you're talking probably about six grand when all said and done, depending upon how many CALS client access licenses you have, plus you need whatever support that you have internally, plus you need to upgrade. And what we've done with that and taken that from a capital expenditure and investment and turned it into, hey, there's a monthly subscription fee. Done. So you could literally have, if we had, let's say, an organization with 100 users, they could have Exchange. They could have SharePoint. They could have Live Meeting Communicator. We're going to talk about what Live Meeting Communicator, excuse me, link, are. They could have that for essentially 100 times 10, 1,000 bucks, 12,000 bucks a year. Done. Okay, and relatively light, we'll get into what we mean by that, relatively light administration uh, requirements. Wow, that's actually not bad. Now, so what do we have with Google? Well, Google has Google Docs, Google Apps. So they've got these web-based applications as well as the email and all that kind of stuff goes. And they're looking at about five bucks to ten bucks, depending upon the level that you're looking at, per user. Well, that's about the same price. And here we are. Any questions? Thanks for coming. Okay. So what, one of the biggest challenges, whenever you start talking about the cloud, and the cloud is right up there with virtualization as a completely bastardized term that's just thrown around there all over the bloody place. Essentially, the resource that you're using is up there. It's not in your facility. That's cloud. All right. Now you can get into whether it's your your server that you're renting space from, or it's a virtual server, or whatever. But the bottom line is the resource that you're connected to is not localized. So let's take two scenarios. We've got a scenario where we've got a cloud-based user of resource, and we've got a local-based user of resource. The local-based user of resource has their stuff right here, or on a server that's nearby. Well, what happened? Where's the vulnerability for that local-based user? The vulnerability is if this thing goes down, if we lose the server. The vulnerability is also if someone from the outside is connecting, whether the connection goes out, their DSL or their T1 line. If you're cloud-based, if you're local, if I'm sitting here and my resources are in the cloud, if we lose connection to the building, I'm dead in the water. Okay. 
but I can also go down the street to somebody else who has a connection, and we should be okay. One of the key things is both strategies have vulnerabilities. That's one of the things that is not stressed enough. If you go with a strictly exchange environment, if you go strictly with everything on your laptop or desktop, if your location goes down, you're dead in the water. Okay. We'll go into this a little more detail. By the way, any questions on this, absolutely bring them up. Isn't this the wonderful thing you've got? So, but one of the challenges is that Microsoft had was that they've got this wonderful suite of products called Office. Word, Excel, of course, PowerPoint. And those tools are expensive. They are updated every two freaking years, and half of us don't even know why. And they also have to be installed on our desktops. Google Apps, this 50, 60 bucks a year, doesn't have to be installed, and it includes kind of a word processor, kind of a spreadsheet, kind of a data, you know, it includes smaller, lighter versions of that. Well, Microsoft realized they've got a lousy positioning right now, or they had a lousy positioning. So what they're doing now is they're, re they're releasing new versions of their office tools that are cloud-based. So you can now use Word, Excel, a PowerPoint light version, whatever, that are web-based. There's no software to install. Or you can use the stuff that you're installing on your desktop. You've got the choice. Okay? Google stuff, it's only web-based. There's no thick alternative at this point in time. So, these are all wonderful, yay, ain't they though? If we take a look at BPOS, BPOS, as we pointed out, and I'm not going to go too much into this. We may take a look at the, the uh, sign-ins. How many of you are familiar with Active Directory? Okay. I, I thought your head was going to fall off with that head now, so I'm glad it didn't because last time that happened, it was really weird. Active Directory is essentially that database for your organization that controls all of the security, not all the security, but primary security. You know, the whole authentication, authorization. Who are you? Now that we know who you are, what can you do? One of the challenges with BPOS and with Google Docs is the lack of integration. So in other words, you have this Active Directory, which has all the information about your organization and your people, and then you have this stuff up in the cloud that doesn't know it. Well, with Office 365, there is a tighter, streamlined integration between the two. So you will be able to single sign-on when you log on to your Desktop here, you're logged on to the cloud services as well. Okay, Or you can just go on a web browser and use your network logon credentials to log on to the cloud services. You can do that. Now you can do PowerShell, which is fun and exciting. The real key thing here is, first of all, now you can actually subscribe to Office, the desktop version. So they are now including a subscription that includes the desktop version of Office 2010. You can now do that as part of the online subscription. And we'll go into what the details are for those subscriptions. So now, not only do you have, hey, I'm going to buy Office with my Dell computer, so it's an OEM version. Hey, I'm going to go over to Best Buy and buy a copy of Office. Hey, I'm going to do an open licensing. Hey, I'm going to do an open value. Hey, I'm going to do an open value subscription. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Now, in addition to that, you've got it as a monthly subscription service. Okay. SharePoint and Exchange have both been updated, or are both being updated with Office 365. So, whereas both of them were using the 2007-2008 version, Office, or excuse me, Exchange 2007 and uh, Windows SharePoint Services 3.0, now they're going to be using uh, Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2010 and SharePoint Foundation Services, which is the new version of SharePoint. Okay? What does that mean? SharePoint Foundation brings a whole lot more BI functionality than the SharePoint Services 3.0 had. And uh, a lot of, better, you know, all the pages can be wiki-based. You, know, you get a lot more functionality with the SharePoint than you had before. Okay. 
So, um, let me ask another question because I love asking questions because it takes away that I have to come up with things to say. How many of you are tech? Okay, and how many of you are business? All right, cool. So, when we talk about a primary desktop end user, in an average organization, they need file and print right off, the, right off the bat. They need email. And they need the traditional office productivity tools, your word processors, your Exchange, or excuse me, your uh, Excel, all that kind of good stuff. I mean, that's really your core pieces, parts. What this gives us is this gives us the ability to do this at a monthly per user cost. Now, with this, you're not paying for the Windows desktop software, so you've still got the Windows 7 or XP if you're still using that. But now you've got this ability to simply add subscription seats as you add new employees. If it's a change in employee, that's fine, you just reassign the license. Okay? This makes some of the challenges of which version of Office are we running go away. All right? And I'll be real clear here. This is a strategic change in licensing, both in terms of Microsoft's program and the customer's program. Because this way, what you can do is you can switch and instead of worrying about, you know, OEM and we basically license according to every, you know, three years ago we bought XP desktops, so we have XP on those machines. We have those six-year-old machines, those are running XP in Office 2003. We got the machines we bought two years ago, remember those Vista boxes with the Office 2007 that nobody wants? Uh, then we've got the Windows 7 box with the Office 2010. Oh, we had to upgrade Ralph over in accounting to 2010, so he's got XP in 2010. Great. Both from an end user standpoint, a training standpoint, shared resource standpoint, you've got like four or five geological stratas that you've got to figure out. With this, one stop shopping. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one of the key things. You've also got Outlook Web App, which, if any of you have used that, is actually not bad. Uh, especially if you've got people who are coming from a really old version of Outlook. An old version of Outlook actually is harder to work with, in my opinion, than the new versions of OWA. 